right, now we're adding the servos to the tail. One of the key features to this airplane was the servo brackets. So I wanted to make them so that you could change the direction of the servos depending on what your need is. It was important to me to design this airplane with all the required features like landing gear and flaps and not compromise having to use a 10 channel or 12 channel radio to control all these different functions. For the servo mount that I designed, I designed it so you guys could use the minimum amount of channels required to fly this airplane. You can use a six channel receiver and transmitter to fly this. When the servo bracket direction is mirrored, the servos are facing the same direction. That way when I put them in the elevator, I can hook them up with a Y harness so they both go up or both go down. So you want that for the elevator and for the flaps. But for the ailerons, it's okay that they're facing opposite direction. So I use the Emax 9 gram Metal Gear servos for my airplane. You can also use the less expensive servos with the plastic gears, or I have a universal bracket and you can actually cut some of the bracket out if you want to and mount your own servos in however you want to. Okay, now that we got all this done, we're gonna go ahead and set the fuselage aside. Uh, we're not gonna glue the nose on there quite yet. I wanna get the wing all assembled and get all electronics in the wing. Uh, before we get to the wing, I do wanna tell you guys how I got such good quality with the prints. I've been using the brand new FL Sun V400. This printer works amazing. It's a Delta style printer. The V400 runs at 400 millimeters per second. This printer runs seven inch touchscreen display with the Clipper software. That this printer comes with Clipper software already downloaded is a really awesome feature. It uses a magnetic PEI bed. I've been using FL Sun printers for a long time. It's a great printer, a great company. They really have been lasting very well um, and printing thousands of hours on FL Sun printers. So I definitely recommend getting one of those printers. There's a link in the description to the printer, so make sure to check that out. Let's get back to the build and start work on the wing. For the first step, we need to remove these three support tabs. And then the second piece you need to take off is this support right here. Two spots right here. And then this, you just throw that away. And then we can take our knife and clean it up. Alright, this was the best part. The wings are together. We 
just gotta add some electronics to this thing and we're ready to fly it. So now that we have the magnets put in, these will all just click right on to the front. And I did put the magnets reverse polarity so you can't put it upside down, but then if you rotate it the correct way, they'll just click right, right into place. All right, now that we got all this done, and now we get to start on the best part of the build, we get to add all electronics. So we're gonna go ahead and add the Sunny Sky motors. Okay, now you're gonna to wanna to take these motor mounts and you're gonna to wanna to take a three millimeter nut, put it down into the motor mount. And we also have this tool that I designed to set the depth of the motor mount into the engine. These are adjustable motor mounts so you can actually put a different motor in there than I'm using so that way it can change the depth that the motor sticks out of the cowling. So before we do that, I got one more step we wanna make sure we do first. We wanna run string or something through the wing so that way when we go to pull a wire through the wing, it's nice and easy. Put the tool on there, add the glue, and then just slide it right into the nacelle. And then that will set the depth so that all of the engines are the same. And it will be about 3.5 millimeters from the propeller to the front of the cowling.
All right, guys, after months of work, we're finally out here for the maiden flight. We're gonna use two 2200 milliamp 4S, uh, these Spectrum Smart Tech uh, batteries. Got a nice charger that they use. You just plug them in and it just knows exactly how much voltage to charge it at. Tells you how long it's going to take. And then we're also going to use a separate battery pack just for the receiver. And let's set these up and we'll get the CG set. Now we're going to set the CG on the top of the wing here. There's this uh, spar here. That's right about where you want the CG set. We're going to set about five millimeters forward of that for the maiden flight. So that's how you want it. Just like that. This thing is really fun to build, really good project. If you guys want to build one on your own, there's STL files right in the description below. Just click below and you guys can download this and print this out for yourself. Uh, let's go out and see how it flies. flying really good. I don't have any trim in it. Unfortunately, I lost a tire on takeoff. One of the main wheels came off. Let's go ahead and do a gear for track. Oh, it's stuck. All right, let's bring it in for a landing. Well, it flew good. Actually, it flew really good. So on takeoff, one of the tires I saw roll off, it must the nut came off or something like that. So uh, let's go check the landing gear. It flew really well, actually, though. Tire rolled over here. Let's go get that. Yeah, there's the, there's the tire. So we got to figure out why that came off. <laughs> uh, it took off. No problem, didn't even use any trim, it just tracks nice, that means the wing is like a perfect setup and the CG is set perfectly, so that was pretty awesome. <laughs> Looks like the nut just came off. Yeah, let's go see if I can fix that. Yeah, I'll probably put a fresh batteries in there. So these are four cells. Uh, I flew just fine on there. I wanted to fly it with four cell, just to have a little more power, but definitely don't need it. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and try it with three cell. You know, I'd recommend even if you want to go a little bit bigger battery, you can just to get more runtime out of it. So you go probably like a 3200 milliamp or something like that. So I'm gonna put these as far forward as I can, just because they're a little lighter. Uh, I'm gonna bring it in for a landing again. We got a little bit of landing gear issue. We hit a little bit of terrain on this rough stuff and broke the nose gear off. Yeah, so it just, just broke the nose gear off there. There's plenty of room up there to make like a bigger nose gear. I might just kind of redesign this nose gear piece uh, to fit up in there. Or if I could find like an aluminum nose gear, you know, everything else held up really nicely. Like I said, I didn't do a retract because I put that extra nut on here and it's kind of sticking out a little far and I didn't want to risk getting it caught up in the nose gear area and come in with the gear up landing. So we're going to go back and fix the landing gear, fix this nose wheel and uh, we'll bring it back out here. If you guys want to build one, the link to the STL files are right in the description below. So thank you guys so much for watching. We'll see you guys in the next build.